Welcome to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know those people that make mm -hmm. laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that, oh, some time ago, oh, you went and elected. <laughs> and the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that important meeting or not. And face it. The results can be a very taxing situation. Right. And you know what? If you don't show up, there's a thing called humor that sometimes bubbles to the top, but sometimes hides. But not much if you missed that meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if, you, if you watch this show, you'll find out where the humor's at because we dig for it. Right? Of course, and it's distant relative. Rumor. A rumor. <laughs> right, you got it. And one of us makes more rumors than the other. That would be this guy. Yeah, so what you want to do is look I at need, the content. I always need somebody to confirm them. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. Okay. Well, let's uh, talk about a couple of meetings that we had uh, last week. One of them is the Village of Oxford uh, special council meeting that they had. A special council. Yeah. That's usually a one-subject deal, isn't it? Actually, it was a work session. Oh. <laughs> Right. Fell into that one. Right. They had a work <laughs> session, first of all, and then they had their regular meeting later on in ah, the day. Okay. And that would have been April 24th. Uh, of course, serving on that board is uh, Sue Basardit. Um, Helmuth serves on the board. Maureen. Uh, Eric Dolan is on the board. Mm -hmm. Joe Frost. Uh, and also David Bailey. Right. Yeah. Now, David just, Bailey has been on there practically longer than anyone. He has. He's uh, been there since uh, Moses, pretty much. <laughs> As a matter or of fact, Moses' uh, dad, I'm sure. Or Moses' <laughs> dad. Could be Moses' dad also. But anyway, the discussion for the special meeting was for the clerk treasurer position. And, uh, of course, the existing clerk um, mm -hmm. treasurer filling in right now is Lori Fisher. On a part-time basis. On a part-time basis. <clears throat> and she is the treasurer for mm -hmm. Addison Township, but is serving this position for right. a, under a contract agreement. Yeah. Well, Lori Fisher says, I'm not going to do it anymore. So do it anymore, anymore or be elected to a permanent position? Well, she doesn't want a new contract when it's all done. She doesn't want a permanent position. So her current position expires when? Well, actually, it's not going to expire right away because they're going to look for somebody. And um, Joe Madure, who was the uh, village manager, provided a um, description of a job description for the individual they want to hire. Mm -hmm. And also, they did talk about uh, how much they expect to spend. And he was pointing out that other communities that have a treasurer and they have a separate clerk pay each of those people approximately $50,000 each. So you're looking at roughly talking, a budget of $100,000. Are we talking uh, municipalities of similar size or, of similar, just, or just a random selection? No, of similar size. Okay. And uh, not that they would pay $100,000 for an individual doing both jobs. But, but that's just the salary and not total comp. Right. And I think what they're looking for in terms of wages is somewhere around the 55000 mark mm -hmm. in that area. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> Joe Madure actually has an idea <laughs> or a, a connection with somebody that he thinks would do the job quite well. It's that person indicated an interest to him. Oh, about a year or so back, oh. but he felt that everything was moving along pretty well and felt maybe Lori Fisher might fill this position, you know, permanently, so he didn't really, you know, chase after the... Mm. And, uh, bef and before that, they've been to this well several times. They have. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so he felt that maybe he would uh, throw the line out and see if this individual might be interested at this time. That would be one uh, individual. Uh, the other one is to send out a, a notice um, of employment to tr try to reel in some candidates. Okay. We did have some in the past, and he said, well, what about bringing some of these people back? They didn't feel that that was in something that they would be inclined to do, that they want to put it out. Isn't there a, 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 a municipal organization throughout the state? <clears throat> there is. And can you make postings in that throughout yes, you their can. newsletter? Yes. Okay. You can do, do that. They? Yes. And the thing is, uh, you know, the village manager has the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And he was just trying to get 
some direction, you know, from this uh, board before All you right. went further. Well, good luck. Yep, good luck with that one, folks. <laughs> um, in the past, of course, we've seen a revolving door when they've, they've done interviews, you know, for this particular position. Um, and other jobs, too, you know. People have actually accepted the job in the past, only to decline it. You know, one individual even was here for a week and then decided that she didn't want to do it. So it's, uh, it's an interesting situation they're in. It was pointed out by uh, Eric Dolan. Of course, the, there were issues that, a lot of issues that had to be resolved by that person coming in uh, in the past, and I think a lot of those have been resolved now, haven't they? You think so? <laughs> yes. Yes, they have. And as a matter of fact, Eric Dolan pointed that out. He, he was very pleased with the way things are going right now, mm -hmm. was the comment that he made, and I, I think he's right looking at it. Um, it has cost him extra money in order to get to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he recognized that as well as the rest of the board. That wasn't really the avenue they wanted to take, but that is what it is, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Well, the next thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the Oxford Village Council meeting that they had in, later on in the evening uh, after this special meeting. And, of course, <laughs> again, Suba Sardet was there, Dolan, Helmuth, Bailey, and Frost. Uh, Joe Madur was there as well as Drew Benson who did okay. the recording. Drew Benson is the uh, assistant, which oh, might say? He's intern slash assistant to the manager, I think. Yes, okay. Pretty sharp young man, doing a good job out there, and I think the village manager, um, Mr. Madur, is doing a, well, uh, a good job as well. <clears throat> so they went into the preliminaries, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, they had a moment of silence for uh, deceased and um, also for the military. Um, and a couple of uh, deaths that were noted was a note of death in Joe Frost's family and also the chief of police, uh, uh, Mike his, Sowall's his mother, mother passed yeah, away. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, they then wanted to approve the agenda and they did add to the um, unfinished business by Mr. Dolan. The clerk position, he wanted to cover that avenue again because they had discussed it earlier in the special meeting. And with that, they approved the agenda. Next thing is, is there any presentations? No, nope, no presentations. Public hearing, no public hearing. Notice how we're clomping right along here. Wow, check, okay. check, check, check. Check, <laughs> check, check. Okay, uh, no public hearing. And call to the public. Zippity doo agenda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody raised their hand, nobody ran to the podium, but there okay. were people there. And uh, some of the people there were uh, Bill Service, our manager for the station, and Terry Stiles, oh, who gave okay. a presentation. We'll cover that a little bit down the line here. Uh, consent agenda uh, to receive and file. Uh, the minutes for April 10th was approved, and also the amount of uh, bills for eighty thousand eight hundred thirty-five dollars. No sense this time. Okay. So, how often does that happen? Not very often. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that check ready, though. Okay. Uh, including the budget amendments also were approved at that time. Unfinished business. Okay. Snow emergency. Hey, we're back to the snow again. Even though leaves is, is are starting called, to Is this sprout. called advanced planning? <laughs> this is advanced planning. <laughs> well, they're looking in retrospect. They're looking back at those drifts that they had. Snow oh, they're looking so at the game films, eh? <laughs> they, were, they were doing that, yes. And interesting enough, you talk about snow, but I just got back from an MTA meeting. Um, and that is Massachusetts a, Transportation Authority? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's close, though. <laughs> did you ever return? Did I ever return? <laughs> no, I never returned from that one, I can tell you that. <laughs> Uh, if you saw Massachusetts, they had about three feet of snow there, but that's a whole <laughs> different subject. Anyway, we were in Traverse City, and um, there's snow there, I believe it or not. Wow, a week a before, lot? yeah. Well, not a whole lot. I, I mean, but it was still there. Yeah. And actually, um, Lake Michigan was coated with ice down near Sheboygan. So if you live on the west coast of Michigan, your season is somewhat shorter. <laughs> right, but we're down south, so we're in the warm yep. climate, folks. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> and we'll talk about this when we come back right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Dave Kenny. You can catch me on Auto Talk and Science in the News as part of Oxford News this week. You can catch us Monday through Friday at 12 noon, 6.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. Also, you can catch us on the weekend at 12 noon and 11 p.m. 
on Saturday and at 6.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Sunday. See you there. <laughs> Welcome back to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about what's going on at the Oxford Village Council meeting on April 24th. And uh, so far we covered the preliminaries and uh, the bills, which is always an interesting subject. Where's the meat? Where, where's the meat? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably hiding uh, under the, the large bun. <laughs> but anyway, uh, unfinished business was the next subject, and snow emergency was the I issue that came up. Eric Dolan says, whoa, he says, we need to have a higher penalty, he says, for not removing their snow. He says, $15 is way we're gonna too low. going to Mother Nature. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fifteen dollars is way too low for the amount of snow that's left. <laughs> that's not going to work. How about fifty dollars? That should work. Well, that's painful. <laughs> <laughs> right? That'll hurt the snow right where you want. It also puts you in the position of hiring it done. <laughs> right. It will do that. And if they don't hire it done, they suggested maybe the village should hire it done and then send a bill. What Ooh. a radical idea that is. That's right. And I just suggested <laughs> do it. Send the bill to Dave Kenny. But they didn't go along with that one. So. Yeah, it is COD. what it is, <laughs> right? COD. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they did have a discussion on this, and they felt that, uh, particularly Joel Frost said, "Well, what are other uh, contracts? What are they doing in other uh, villages and in small cities? That kind of thing." They and, round them up and send and them into they, exile. No, no, they make big <laughs> snowballs and they send them over oh, to <laughs> Egypt because they don't have a lot of snow there. Is that what those catapults are for? <laughs> I think they might be. Uh, you probably did that as a kid. That's what? all you know about that, snowballs what? and catapults. Well, snowballs for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Well, yeah, you were in pretty uh, cold climate, though, most yeah, of the time. Yeah, Newfoundland had a lot of snow when I was growing yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine. And I don't think the uh, ocean kind of froze, did it? Yes, it did. It did. Mm -hmm. Man, it got really cold there. Yeah. Hmm, interesting enough. Okay, but anyway, Joe Frost says, well, maybe we should look at an alternative and uh, determine what other municipalities are doing and uh, see if maybe we could hire a subcontractor to come in and do it, and maybe even find resources, funding, in order to have it covered within the village. Might why not, be a why not hire a contractor? Well, that's, what, that's, that's kind of what I was trying to say. <laughs> I didn't say that? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> okay. But you did it so well. Yeah, well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> village manager said that he will research the options then, and then <laughs> he will uh, reapproach uh, the issue, he said, in a future meeting. And uh, being, of course, they have spring and summer coming on, not too much worries about the snow and blizzards and that kind of thing right now. But they want to have everything in place. Uh, but did they table the issue? Uh, well, or they... Or just shovel it under? <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, shuffle it aside. They I see. shuffled it aside. I see. And so they will be back and, Organizing and talk in the about it again. Right. And I'm sure Eric Dolan will make <laughs> sure it comes back. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, clerk treasurer was the next uh, <laughs> subject that they talked about. And Lori Fisher, of course, and I, I pointed out that she was not interested in uh, getting a full time job with the village. Uh, so that was kind of information that's good and bad in the fact that she was doing a pretty good job mm -hmm. and, you know, ironing things out. But she is willing end. to stay on until such time as a permanent replacement yes. is available. And what they will do is establish, I believe, establish a um, temporary contract for her. And it looks as though it's being felt that a new clerk treasurer could be replaced and in 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 the administrative building by July, mid July maybe. Okay. So that's kind of the time frame, you know, that they're looking at. So uh, they're going to expand the existing mm. contract with uh, Lori up until that time. Discussion followed, established a meeting to consider extension for Lori Fisher's contract. It was part of the conversation went on, and they're going to have a special session or meeting, uh, which was last Thursday, or would be this Thursday. Was that the special which meeting? Which we already that had. We, was that the special meeting you were just talking about? Yes. No, oh. this is a different one. Oh, a different special yeah, meeting. This is, yeah, they'll get together on this one on a work session and actually determine what the contract should read. More likely, it'll, it'll conform with the existing contract she has, other, other than the dates will change. This you is know, her contract, not the proposed contract for the new employee. No. Okay. Well, that'll be part of it, but they did discuss it at the previous meeting. Okay. And there is a uh, template available of 
you know, what is expected, you know, which the village already made up at one time, a console before. So it was kind of sitting in the archives. Good to take another look at it. Times change. Sure. And <clears throat> what happened is um, Mr. Madour, the village manager, says, oh, what do we have here? Oh, we have a job description. <laughs> Blow the <laughs> dust off. <laughs> said, we'll bring it back and see if it fits. So that's where they are. They're going to Looks like it was written it. with a quill. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. Or it's probably the big heavy rock that they have to carry oh, in no. with. <laughs> could be a problem. So anyway, that's what they're going to do, and they're in hot pursuit of a new uh, clerk treasure. <laughs> M24 um, pedestrian mobility uh, audit uh, for Oxford Township made the presentation, and that was Joe Ferrari that spoke the treasurer mm -hmm. of Oxford Township. And uh, what the uh, situation is, they want a safety path, commonly known to you folks as a sidewalk, uh, to be on the west side of Washington Street, connecting with the existing safety path that the township has established. In order to do that, they need to get a sponsor. Now the sponsor just needs to raise their hand and say, yes, that's a good idea, we'll do it. But normally a sponsor also uh, provides money. Mm. And he said, it'd be nice if you had $50,000 <clears> to donate <throat> towards this. And they went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Grab their chest so as though they long, were going to faint. How long an extension would there be from the village to meet up with the township? How much of an extension? Yeah. Mm, one or two feet. <laughs> no, it's quite a few. Uh, it'll run from Drainer Road, roughly, along that route, down to actually connect with the village itself, you know, the business district. The idea being that people... Oh, wait a minute, with Drainer Road? Yeah. We're talking the north-south oriented sidewalk yeah. on the west side of the business yeah, district. Yeah, right. On the, now, keep in mind that MDOT has already approved a uh, sidewalk for the east side when, we, when they do the renovation of the street. Going up towards Meyer. Going up towards Meyer. Okay. Well, it won't be Meyer. It'll be up to the, actually up to the bridge area, you know, the crossing up there in Oxford. Okay. The pedestrian walk. That's still called sidewalk. Could be called sidewalk. It's going to be called something else because it's going to be renamed <laughs> coming up soon. But that's and part of the polyandrial. And there'll, and there'll be a plaque. Yes. There's a, <laughs> all kinds of things, folks, that you'll learn more about as we talk about polyandrial. We should have maps behind us. <laughs> we should. You said that more than once. I know. I yeah, know, I and know, still I know. no maps. I mean, no yeah. map. you can cry all you want. <laughs> all right, no maps. Anyhow, um, <laughs> The uh, outcome of this was that it was approved uh, from a standpoint of agreeing to sponsor with the township this mm -hmm. effort without funding because they don't have money. That's why no funding. Will they have input? They can, well, very little input if they don't fund <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But anyway, in order to get the grants uh, money in order to do this, the township needs a partnership with the village to do it. Okay. So it makes sense to go ahead and do this. Well, in reality, since the village is not, quote-unquote, a city, it's also part of the township. That is true. So, Absolutely true. Yep. And don't you forget it, folks. <laughs> we'll be back right <laughs> after this. Welcome back, Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the village council meeting that mm -hmm. they had on the 24th of this month, April. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked our way to an agreement for summer <laughs> village tax collections. I don't know if you're aware that the township collects the tax money for the village. That's an efficient way to do it. It is a very efficient way of doing it. And uh, Joe Ferrari handles that in a very tough, strict way manner does a great yep, job yep yep and then they fund the money back to the village once it's all figured out and they use the same accounting system so right. there you go and we're talking roughly about twenty six hundred dollars in order to do this which is really inexpensive yeah if you were to have your own cpa well, they've got all the machinery set up and everything yep, to do they it, do so. and it conforms with what the township requires as well so yep. it fits in very well that has worked for years will continue to work i think for years because it's so efficient uh, cable franchise fees, uh, that's an area that uh, was discussed. Uh, Terry Stiles um, spoke on behalf of the TV station here and was trying to uh, 
corner of the village into giving back 2.5% of the franchise fees, which they chose not to provide well, right uh, now, number, a few right years now, ago. The, the township collects 5% of the franchise mm -hmm. fees and takes half of that and gives to us. 2.5%. Right. And uh, just recently, I believe, the village uh, started collecting peg fees, which they hadn't done in the past. Right. So what she was asking is <coughs> that we should go back to the full 5% because mm -hmm. a number of years ago, not that far off, that's what they did. The village provided that. Right. Which, Just to make, put it in retrospect, the township retrospect. gives everything. You know, to right. the, the township gives everything. To the station. And the lion's share, actually, of our total income. But uh, and thanks, folks. If the village had given the full amount, that would have amounted to 7.5% of the, that'd be the franchise fees plus the peg fees together. Right. Well, we all know things are getting tougher out there, but if you folks like the television productions that we're putting out for sports and everything that we do, it's a, it's, you might want to get on the bandwagon and talk to the village. Uh, they've got a meeting coming up, I believe, uh, and he'll talk about the meetings uh, you know, at the close of minutes by minute here. But you may want to attend that meeting if you're concerned. Um, if we can keep on producing these programs for you, that's what our intent is. And of course, we need the funding to do it. Well, the equipment wears out, and just by chance, the new equipment seems to cost more than the old equipment. <laughs> right. The, a couple of things that came up with this, too, is that uh, Eric Dolan, he questioned, hey, he said, I'm concerned about, you know, this tax money, uh, you know, from the residents being used, you know, for this purpose. Eh, eh, yep. Not tax money. <laughs> Terry Stiles says, hold it. <laughs> this Red is light, not, uh, flags. You don't understand it. <laughs> this is not tax money. This franchise fees, which every person that uses the... Uh, system, the, the communications cable, uh, are paying. Right. And it comes back, you know, and actually it's, it's state regulation requirement, federal. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has nothing to do with your taxes out there, folks. You don't pay extra money in order for this station to run. That needs to be very clear. And Mr. Dolan was made aware right. of that. That does not appear on your tax bill. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> and also, um, he said he was concerned with some of the content of the programming. And it was pointed out the amount of uh, increase that we've had on YouTube alone uh, and into the thousands of right. additional people that watch YouTube, not to mention you folks that do uh, cable uh, for Charter and for right. AT&T. And, but we have three means of access to our station. Well, more than that, we broadcast. Mm -hmm. What? We have Facebook. Yes. We have YouTube, which is huge. We huge. have something called Vibit, which replaced Peg Central where it goes on in a much more controlled environment if you're looking some, for something specific. Uh, I think we are also uh, do something on Twitter too, don't we? We do, yep. So and so We've got those bases covered, folks. we got a bunch of little Twitters here running around <laughs> <laughs> trying to make sure that the news gets out. And keep in mind that what you folks are watching here is strictly local news, uh, things that other TV stations don't cover. So you do have an advantage here, and we're trying to convince the village here that they need to provide the 2.5%. So I don't know if the argument is gonna work, but if you folks show up and you let them know that you're concerned, uh, that you enjoy watching kids play sports and so forth, and enjoy the news, I think that will be an impact on the village, always has been. So, with that being said. Just uh, remember, it's not a taxing situation. It's not a taxing <laughs> situation. It is not, and it should not be uh, ever. Okay, so uh, Joe Madur, um, was concerned that auditor contracts be instated uh, in the past in order to have the auditor come in it cost the village roughly up to twenty thousand dollars for the year it's expensive process he recommended that you continue to keep the existing auditor at the cost of about fifteen thousand five hundred per year okay. and i think they were talking about a three-year contract down the line here, but I think it was set for one year, if I'm not mistaken. That could be okay. a rule or a, um, what do you call one of those things? Rumors. Could be. Rumor? It could be a rumor. Oh, that financial <laughs> stuff is always a rumor. <laughs> it's always, but it's a, st a substantial amount of money. But oh, sure. you got to keep in mind, though, the 20000 well, they had a big job to try to figure out what well, the heck if, was going if, on. If, especially, you know, if for one reason or another, uh, the accounting process drifts this way or that way you got to have that third party come in and tell you which is the straight and narrow path. You got that right. 
And if the path is crooked, you got a problem, <laughs> right? Yep. <clears throat> All right, presentation, uh, draft budget. Uh, Joel Madur introduced uh, the budget for wages, benefits, and explained the process. You folks can learn more by going to occtv.org and catching the actual meeting out there. Uh, budget workshop and adoption schedule. Uh, again, you can see the meeting. Uh, go out, check it out, and you'll learn more about that. It's quite detailed. And public comments, no public comments. And that took per, pretty much care of that. So what do we have coming up? We have some meetings on 5.14, uh, I think it is. Uh, at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township ZBA. And as ZBAs go, sometimes they're on and sometimes they're canceled. You never know. you got to check. And at 7 o'clock that same day, the Village of Leonard Council, another one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. And on 5.15 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Planning Commission. Good one. And on 5.16 at 3 a.m., the Pollyann Trail Management Council. Aren't you part of that? Yes, I am. Well yes. done. We expect a full report. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> and on 5.17, the following day, the, uh, at 4.30, the North Oakland Transportation Authority, or NOTA, will be meeting. Hot diggity. Okay, well, I'm going to cut in here with something more because uh, the Oxford Township had a planning commission meeting on April 26th. Uh, Mr. Young is the chair. Uh, Tom Berger serves on that board. Ed Hunwick, Jack Curtis, Jonathan Nold, Kelly Rossner Myers, and Mike Spiz, who's with the county, of course. Um, they had respects to the flag, went through all the preliminaries. But the main purpose behind this was a special joint meeting, um, or not a joint meeting, but uh, uh, I want to say a final site plan. Ah, I finally got it. For? For uh, 583 South Lapeer Road, which is clean cars. It's going to be a used car, truck, that kind of that thing. That used to be the Burger King. It was Burger King. You remember Burger King? I remember okay. Burger King. Well, there's going to be a lot of changes there, and some right. of the concerns that they had were uh, could, there's going to be a combined lot in order to make it work. Uh, payment. Um, in they were on, they're, from, they're right now they're on the east side of the road, but they're just moving yeah, to the west side. They are, but they're gonna. There's things such as parking lot uh, concerns, uh, customer sp uh, spaces need to be expanded, green belt requirement, and dumpster screening and, and lighting and luminance, that kind of thing. But that's what went on. It was approved, uh, the final move because there were a number of issues that this particular. Uh, company had that they went before the Zoning Board of Appeals and they they took care of what was required by the Zoning Board. So with that, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Minutes by Minute. See you then. <laughs>